dude, the best heckle I've ever heard of, right? I'll admit I wasn't there for, but I've had several people tell me this really happened. Okay. So there's this dude, uh, he's got a lisp, okay? And uh, let's call him Dave. I don't want to give his real name. Okay. But uh, Dave's got this lisp, but Dave is very arrogant, all right? So there's like five comics. They all go up to Victorville, and they're in this bar, and there's six people in the whole audience. And it's a big area. It's like one of those big dance halls, you know? Yeah. So there's like six people in this big ass dance floor. So that's totally spaced out. No one's laughing. Every comic goes up at bombs. This other dude's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. I can't wait to get up there and kill him. Let's go. I'm gonna kill the fit out of him. You know what I mean? Just I had to, it was hard to find a word with an S there. But uh, yeah. but anyway, though, so we um so we starts as a set and he goes, Yeah, so uh so I got this list from uh, you know, just eating some bad pussy. And he goes on about this joke about eating some bad pussy. And then no one laughs. Later on, he comes back and he goes, no, seriously, though. He goes, I got this list from my mama. And some dude jumps up and goes, oh, he just said he ate his mother's pussy. Oh, <laughs> like, shit. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. I was like, there's no coming back for that. Just drop the mic. Dude, that's your closer. Damn. End it. End Damn. it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to retire after this <laughs> Exactly. Shit. And I mean, look, we've all been a victim of you know, having that perfect heckle. Yeah. That would definitely, I think that would just definitely stop me in my tracks. I'd be like, uh, yeah, it's time to go back to vocational school um, or something after that. Done. <laughs> but, nice. Dope, dope. So, man, I'm glad to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. Good to learn more about you. Uh, you're originally from? I'm originally from Toledo, Ohio. I uh, nice. grew up out here, though. I mean, I moved out here on my 12th birthday in 1991. And okay. Just came out here and just slugged it out here. And this is a tough city, man. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, there's, when I came up, no clubs, no clubs, no clubs wanted to take locals. Because, you know, at that time, Vegas was right. Vegas. Right. So the top comics in the world were getting paid to host and feature, and they were getting paid good, good, good money. At what point did you get into comedy, by the way? I got into comedy. At what age? I was, not, I was at the tail end of 19. I'm 41 now. Wow. So, like, uh, I was at the tail end of 19. OG, ladies and gentlemen. Thank we got you. got an OG in the house. He's got his OG certification. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow. Well, you know what it was, though? But then I got into radio. So, like, I got, okay. I, I did, like, a double whammy thing. So, whenever stand I say. Stand up first, then radio. Stand up first. Cool. Then radio came, like, right after that. Cool. So, I was, uh, you know, so I was doing stand up uh, at 19, sneaking in the bars. And it was kind of funny because, like, all the OGs, all the older comics. Yeah. You know, they all knew I was coming and they would stand like in a row and I'd walk on the other side of them and then they'd walk by the bartender and nobody would card me. Mm. So I would luck out like that. It was nice. kind of it was kind of cool because, you know, I was by far the youngest one at that time. I don't wow. even think I think the next youngest guy might have been like 26, 27 wow. at that time. So wow. uh, but it was kind of cool to see all these older dudes yeah. kind of you know, get together just so the, just so the young kids. Make kick. way for the new yeah, yeah, I just thought that was really cool. And, that makes uh, a difference. I'm sure you learned a lot from it. I did, I did. And the funny thing is, it's like, I, there's, I don't think there's any of them are still around, really. Wow. You know, like, I, I, all those guys that were here, yeah. they're barely, barely doing it. And now, I, now I'm kind of been like, it feels like I've been the longest tenured open micer in Las Vegas. The only ones that's really started out here and built his way up into the clubs and stuff. Uh, what do you think has contributed to that? Uh, radio definitely mm -hmm. has helped. I think, yeah. I think what a lot of comics don't understand is, uh, and you always see this. Mm -hmm. This is one thing I can't stand about comedians because their expectations are their worst enemy. Oh, man. You know, and yep. you always see these comics and they're depressed and sad and they can't get anywhere. And it's because they have this expectation. Right. Unfortunately, you, younger cats, like, this whole time, all they've been talking about is greatness, greatness, greatness. You got to be greatness, greatness, right. greatness. Grind, 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 grind. grind, grind. Right. <laughs> and guess what? You might be gr grinding and you might not be great. Right. You, you might may not, not be built for this shit. Great. Yeah. You may not be built for this shit. But you've been told your time. So right. then these guys get in and they're like, well, what else am I supposed to do? Right. You know, and uh, it's always that. It's really, it, it, it's that's where I think comedy is so hard on some people is right. because, you know, you you see certain people on 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 camera and or on or on, on video and you're just so drawn to them right. like how many how many comics have you bumped into that just want to be patrice o'neill and they go up there and they blast chicks calling them bitches every other right. word and i'm like right. i don't know what it was i can't tell you why i laughed when patrice did it but i ain't laughing <laughs> at you dude right. and he had a gift right. you don't right. you know and and i'm not saying that you don't you don't have his gift. You might have another gift. Right. So you might be able to shift gears and go in a different direction. Right. But unfortunately, 
We all kind of go towards our heroes. Right. I want to go, right. I want to be like Dave Chappelle. I want to touch on race. I want to touch on all these other things, right. these political charge things. And right. it's like, sometimes it works. Yeah. And it's, you know, and here's the thing. When, when it I, doesn't, it sucks. Oh my God. <laughs> when I saw Dave do it on Killing Him Softly, that was a special for him. It right. was his people coming out to see him. Yeah. Me doing the same yeah. shit in front of a bunch of strangers that yeah. don't didn't expect that. They're like, yeah. uh, I don't know where I'm going. At that you know, time? Yeah, yeah, at that time, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's just... People just don't, you know, uh, again, like we, we look at our heroes, we look at our influences and we think that's what we need to be. Right. And it just takes some people so long to figure out, no, 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 just do you. Right. There's guys like Dave, there's guys like Eddie Murphy right. that, are, that start off so young right. and they are just them. Right. And then there's guys like Larry the Cable Guy who start off as Dan Whitney and it takes him about 10, 15 years to realize I need right. to be Larry the Cable Guy. Right. And make that money and bring a whole new style of comedy to the people. Right. So I think I think it's about getting finding your lane and what your niche is and what what feels the most organic and the most true to yourself. I think once you can pinpoint that, then it's a lot easier to say this is something I, I feel comfortable doing and being consistent with, and this is where I'm going to grow and probably be the most successful. And, and, and being able to move from within that. But a lot of people don't make that pinpoint, so they end up watching other people's blueprints and the way other people are moving, and they try to take those same paths. Absolutely, and what they don't understand is that's you. That's an individual thing. You know, yeah. That's an isolated incident, which just happened to you. That happened to that one person. That can't happen to you because that one person had this life right. come out. And they also had this type of bone structure, and right. they also had these type of friends, and they had this type of, you know... Uh, uh, socionomic, you know, whatever right. kind of college right. word you want to throw in right, there. They right, had right, this right. type of upbringing. Right. It's like you can't you to 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 to, to say that somebody's going to have the same type of a uh, success. Now, it, it goes and, and it's and with comedy. There's just so many things. Like you'll see some women they get boosted up to the top top level just because they got great bone structure. Right. You know what I mean? That's or a like, fat ass or a fat ass or something <laughs> or just something to right. something. But then there's other women out there that will just that are so funny and they right. get it and they're so funny. And then what do they get? Bunch of dickheads walk up to him going like, oh, you're funny for a female. Right. No, she made you laugh, fuck face. Right. She's funny for a comic. Right. Recognize that. Right. You know, but unfortunately, sometimes the wrong thing keeps getting put out there, you know, and because it looks good in a package, it might not necessarily mean that what's in that package is good. Right. Because. You know, and, and that's and unfortunately in entertainment, you know, like look at rock and roll, look at look at R and B. I'm sorry, I want my singers ugly as fuck because <laughs> yeah. they meant it. When they're yeah. talking about oh, heartbreak, man. passion and yeah. soul, you could feel that shit. When they're talking about heartbreak, <laughs> I'm like they. When they're like talking about like I'll never love again, he's thinking he ain't gonna love again because right. he knows there's not gonna be any opportunities right. Right. coming right. along for that ugly humpback right. looking right. Right. motherfucker. You know? models, they can't sing with that type of passion. Yeah. It's like if you don't get your three filtered ass, he really needs what he's saying. You know? Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, like like you, like you, dude. If your lady loves you. Be like, oh man, I'm bummed out. Well, it's like I'm never gonna hit a pussy again. You know what I mean? Right. But but meanwhile, if you really meant that, oh man, it's coming from the heart it's and it's hitting and it's hitting here. Right. And you can feel that. Yeah. You know, people can people can notice that. So it's the being genuine part that's that's there. And that's the key. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. There's a I do a podcast, shameless plug. <laughs> nice. Throw it out there. What, what is it called? It's called Rise to Offend. Cool. And it's a uh and it's a, a documentary podcast. Mm. And what we do is we follow figures that rose to offend in society and we talk about their legacy today. Now, this could be somebody in the arts. It could be somebody political. Uh, right. Like we, we did an episode on like, you know, Marilyn Manson. We did one on right. ODB. We did right. one on, uh, um, <clears throat> oh God, what's his name? Uh, one of the, the leaders of, uh, one of, re it wasn't Mandela, but it was the guy that really paved the way for Mandela and apartheid to be lifted. Mm. I can't, oh my God, I feel terrible not remembering his name. Oh, God, uh, it's killing me. It'll hit you in five minutes. It will, dude, it will, <laughs> I hate it. But I got, but the thing is always, this, this podcast will make you, uh, you, and what we do is we talk about like how, how they rose to power, how they, how they became popular, mm -hmm. why they were being seen as offensive mm -hmm. and where they're seen as today. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because you know, it really does force you to do the research. That's true. It's not going to, um, it, it really does force you to do the research. So there, there are people out there that I was like 100% behind. Right. And then I do my research and I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. 
But then there's people out there that I, I was like, oh, I hate that person. And I do my research and I'm like, I still don't like them, right. but now I respect this person. Right. And that's where a lot of things are lost, man. And, but but the, the reason why I bring up the podcast, though, is um, there was one we did in our recent episode, and it just works out perfectly. But uh, I've been doing, there's a poet named Charles Bukowski. Mm-hmm. Charles Bukowski uh, was born in the 20s, uh, like in 1920, and, uh, you know, was originally German, but he grew up here in America. Just, just a miserable son of a bitch, yeah. drunk all the time or whatever. But he has this, uh, on his tombstone, it's called Don't Try. And a lot of people get that mixed up. They're like, what does he mean, don't try? And what he means by that is, with him, writing was breathing. He had to write. Mm-hmm. He would send out hundreds of poems, like a, a year, wow. hundreds and hundreds. Could, wow. be, could have been in the thousands, because that's all he knew. Mm-hmm. He, would just, he would just get off work, uh, wake, or actually, he'd work nights, wake up, get up, drink, type, and then go back to work. Fall asleep, wake up, drink, write. You know, yeah. it was it was like that, and and so he did it. Try it's all he knew. You don't try to breathe. Wow, you just we're just breathe. talking about that too. How now, people again, just w- what comes the most natural to you. That's what, and I think we we have a, now have a generation who's trying to figure out their thing and their calling. And uh, me and my wife, we we get into it all the time because you know she's worked in fashion retail management, you know, for years, you know, ten years. And she's still like, yeah, but I don't think that's my passion. It's not my calling. Like, there's a lot of people that are trying to find that thing. And, um, you know, with social media, it just makes it tough because everybody looks like they have something, but they're trying to latch. And, and again, if it's not organic, I don't care what you latch on to. It ain't going to feel right. And it's going to feel forced. And you're going to keep doubting it and back and forth. That's the worst part about social media. Yeah. Because social media makes us compete with our peers yeah. and makes us compete with all these things around. Then we see, then we see the opposition yeah. and we see something that they said and we're like, oh, and then we get worked up on them. And then some people go, will go out and do something way ugly in the name of something you stand for. And now you got to be like, I hate this person. Yeah, you know, they expect it, you to. Yeah. And that's right, the thing. It's right, like, we, it, that's what I'm saying. And, and where we have gone wrong. And I, I just think in this country is we have, we have eliminated the individual and we are going strictly for the group. Mm. And my thing is, it's like, for example, like when you hear the, the phrase of like, you know, you, you hear people like, uh, you know, if you're white, you don't understand what it's like to be black in America. And I'm like, true, but you also don't know what it's like to be white. And right. ask another black dude to describe another black dude's life, and they're going to get it 100% wrong. Mm-hmm. So there might be some similarities, right. but it's not the same thing. Right. So there are things that we have to pinpoint and erase. Mm-hmm. You know, there's things that we have to go, hey, this is wrong, Mm -hmm. stop. But there's also some times where we got to go, okay, where are we going wrong? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, thanks to social media, like, let's just say we want to get a group together. We want to go, all right, let's fix what's wrong in our group. Sure. Unfortunately, the opposition is doing something that takes us, takes that attention away Mm -hmm. on ourselves. We got to stop them from doing this. Well, wait, 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 we we could fix ourselves here. We could fix ourselves. Well, we're too petty. You know, it's like, no, 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 we could do this. Right. It's America doing the the legwork versus the expectations of some thing to to pass to 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 make America better. It it's it's up it's up to us, bro. That's deep. I need a Kleenex. That was deep, y'all. That was deep. I just saved America. You just saved America. Bam. We do. I want my ten percent. Fuckers. (laughs) Give them a cut. Give them a cut. (laughs) Which state do you want? We'll just just change the name of. Let's go L. A. Great. It's it's not a state, but it's got a great. uh, It it will be. It will be one day (laughs) when it falls into the ocean and becomes an island. It will. But I think that that that's that's a powerful message because we got to do the work. You know what I mean? As as a whole, and I think radio comedy entertainment obviously sports helps us do the work and better understanding each other having those conversations and allowing us to kind of all see that especially during this pandemic we all want the same shit you're totally right life. totally right <laughs> and that's that's why it's like you'll see people like again you know you bring up people that take the, the, the like for example Ka- uh, Kaepernick kneeling they'll take yeah. it one way or the other and yeah. I gotta be honest like I I don't, I hate it when people get too mad about one or the other, Mm -hmm. okay? I don't, because when I look at it and I go, okay, this is obviously a showing that we have to call attention Mm -hmm. to something that's going on in America. It needs to happen. We need to happen. We need to let him be able to do that. We need to let him be able to say these things. I get it. But at the same time, though, when people go, I don't don't know if I like the kneeling, and I go, well, why not? They're like, well, 
And this is the best way I've heard it. Mm -hmm. They go, uh, this, this guy, he goes, because, because that, that showing the standing and the hand over the heart and all this stuff, he goes, that was a showing of unity. Mm -hmm. And he goes, and now instead of a showing of unity, it's also, it's not, it's the exact opposite. Right. It's like, here's how divided we are. Right. And you are seeing, and it's like, and I but go. But I guess that's, that's, the, that's the point though. That's the, is it, that was supposed to be a sign of unity. But the whole reason it took a name, just like justice for all was supposed to be for all. Absolutely. But because it was not, absolutely. that's when someone was like, fuck that. Mm -hmm. it, it's broken. Mm -hmm. Now we got to fix it. Right. And, and, here's <laughs> the th and here's the thing. But at the same time, though, is it's like when you, when I, and the, the a person put it to me this way and I go, oh, I didn't look at it this way. And they're like, just imagine being a mom who got a folded up flag. Mm -hmm. And that moment to recognize her son in the military was, right. is now being focused on this. And I'm like, I get it. Yeah. You know, like I, I, I'm not going to say you're right. And I'm not going to, but now I can't say you're wrong. Yeah. And, and I think if more people just looked at it, like I didn't grow up where you grew up, mm -hmm. you could show me like when I look at the nineties, you know, I grew up in the nineties and every movie, was a buddy flick. Every movie was a right. white dude, black right. dude, buddy. Flick, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? It was like every movie. Right. And 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 then what came from that was Chappelle show mm -hmm. and, and all the and we were all laughing in unison. And right. now the focus is we're not the same. Mm -hmm. And it's like now and and you're and I we always knew that, but now it's like, but but that also focus that also puts the focus on a group instead of the individual. And that's where and that's where it ends up in this like unending circle where it's right. like, now we're not focusing on the individual now. Right. Now we're focusing on the group. And it's like, but, but when we focus on the group, we, we lose track of the individual, but we have to focus on the group because the, sure. the group is, sure. getting, a, is getting attacked. We sure. got to do something. Sure. And it's like- Because it's collectively speaking. It, yes. Because even though the 90s, there was these happy TV shows and there was this eclectic groups of black and white people, there was still just shit happening yes. during the midst of yes. it. Hollywood would pinpoint and put together and organize. Oh, this will be a good film. Oh, King of Queens. Hey, we gotta have we got Deacon. Yep. Deacon's yep. on there. Yep. Hey, yep. look how cool yep. and harmonizing that is. But that shit doesn't usually no, happen that it, way. It's not real life, right? So what has happened now is there are other outlets and forms of entertainment to where we can show you what it's like in our neighborhoods or in our streets and exactly. what where that lack or that disconnect was. This is why it's there. And for a long time, I think that there have been a lot of people in America that never understood uh, uh, what the lifestyle is like or why, no idea. you know, the, 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 the disenfranchising has happened or what has led black people to become uh, uh, in the situations that they have been in, in terms of, you know, the hood or, the, or whatever the case. But again, to your point, remember what you were talking about uh, doing the research. Yeah. But a lot of people don't do the research. Like I'm from the South. So. Being from the South. There's a there, lot of research. There's no research. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, there's like, there's a lot of research where you're like, holy shit. Then, right. But that's what I'm saying. When you do right. do the research, especially right. when you're right. focusing on black America, you're like, right. ooh. But, but the, here's the thing. It's not a research. There are a lot of just trained and conditioned behaviors yes. from their parents, from the way things were, right. from the way things were orchestrated. Right. But until you kind of wait a minute and say, you know what? I know things have been flowing this way. Right. Let's take a minute to see why. And does it make sense? for all this, like it was designed to be. Absolutely, and this is one thing that I saw now, I think I've made it apparent that I'm not a Trump fan, <laughs> um, but the one thing I saw that was like, it, it, it showed me, the, the, it, it kind of backs up the individual thing that I was saying, and it was like, I was over, I was shocked by the overwhelming amount of people that, mm. uh, the overwhelming amount of Latinos and blacks that voted for Trump. Yeah. I was like, what, what? And, and I think, and I think that there's just, once we, once we put a, 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 an explanation on how you're supposed to be, yeah. and once you don't fit into that category, right. it's like, you are going to have a backlash yeah, and, course. and look, and again, we're people. So right. it's like our, our, our experiences and stuff and they shape us. Right. And that's, and that's a good point too, not to yeah. cut you off, but a lot of times we'll look at those people that think differently and shame them or shun them. But we also have to understand, again, that expectation we have to understand that maybe due to their upbringing or their environment, there's a disconnect or a not understanding or not, they didn't do the research or there's just something that's a little off that, and they need, they, they perhaps may be open to learning more, but a lot, like I said, being from the South, a lot of people that are fixated in just what they've been exposed to and conditioned behavior mm -hmm. don't necessarily want more knowledge or more no. information because the moment that Kaepernick started to kneel, 
it, nothing that people said yeah. made sense. Right. There was no justifiable right. excuse. I don't like it. Right. And right. then six years later, now there's more stuff. There's more uprising and more people are starting to get it. And now it's like, oh, okay. And now. Psh. And that's, and I think what ended up happening was, is when mm. Kaepernick did that, mm. uh, there was an outpouring of emotion. Yeah. And dude, Definitely. as much as I love emotion in my music yeah. and, and in my art. Oh, man. It's oh, overwhelming when you are when you're all when of you're, this shit is overwhelming. Yes, dude. But when you mix, <laughs> but when you mix emotion in a movement like that, yeah, you don't know how some people yeah. are going to react. Now, unfortunately, but it ain't about that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but 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 but, but you have to understand though when the opposition and this is this is the world we're living in. Right. And you brought up you brought up uh, you know ways you, now you're seeing movie and TV shows and comic books and, right. and you're, you're they're getting an idea right. like there's so much more diversity now right. and it's continuing right. and that's what we need you representation know? we need representation right. Asians okay? and I'm sorry Indians dude. and natives hey to you know, hear their story and learn more and, dude you, and get their experience we have to understand that mm -hmm. okay but it's like um, but learning though learning there is going to be some bumps in the road. Right. And you, we have to allow the opposition to learn. And, and, to, and to that guy, he's like, okay, maybe he didn't like Cap. But then I saw a video of somebody doing, and they were kneeling at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And I'm like, come on, man. That's, I that's, see. yeah, there was a, there was a, there was a viral video or a, or, a, or a picture that went huh. viral of a dude kneeling at that. And I'm like, see, and that's the thing. You didn't see that. On a what it, video? It was, um, on like a tombstone a, of a fallen uh, soldier? The, the, there, there's a, there's a, a memorial. And it's a and all it is is a flame, and they uh, play taps, and they and it's to commemorate all the fall, fallen soldiers. Gotcha. Okay, and it's I, I'm not a hundred percent sure where it's at, okay. so don't so no, I, but uh, but the thing is though is again, that guy doing that knee that knee I'm like, you know what you're doing that at for, that location at that location. Oh, man, and he it's was, like, he was with the ops. Man, somebody sent him there to go but do that, that. See, but that's <laughs> what I'm, paint the narrative. There you go. That was a paid algorithm. But you see, but see, that's <laughs> the, the thing is though is you're right, and it, it could have been, but it might not have been. Yeah. And my thing is just like just like you said, you were like, no, no, no. See, you were like, you were like, no, we didn't, sure. we didn't okay that. Because and, again, that, that goes back thing. to the point. It's an of, individual move, and we want right. we should be punishing exactly. that, individual that individual instead move. of right. the group versus the movement. Right, but right. unfortunately, right. the second that guy did that, right, right, right. boom, it that's the face of the movement. Too. Exactly. Yeah. Just that's, like when there's a protest exactly. and someone, one idiot does some shit. Exactly. Oh, yeah, he threw a ball in the building. Look at, look at them. Look at those dopes. <laughs> look at those dopes. And I'm hearing right. the same shit on the Trump side. There was only 16 of them right. that went into the Capitol. What about the other 500 that were out there not right. doing anything? And I'm like, uh, you know. Right. It, it, but again, it's just yeah. like, it, it's so easy to finger point. Yeah, yeah. It's so easy to do this. It's a yeah. little bit harder to do this. Oh, yeah. Hurts my wrist a little. Right. But God damn it, I got to do it every right. now and then. Because that's where the true, that's and, where and you again, get to take it off of politic, politics, because we spent a little time there. But uh, that's what I think is the, the, the underlining healer and the comforter in life is to be able to really look at yourself and to be accountable for your actions and not justify your behavior. Or and that comes decisions. with age. Right. Or experience. I'll, yeah, exactly. Yep. Experience. You're, I see, I, I think age, I, you're right, experience is one sure. thing, but I still think the experience can happen and then a little bit more age could come along nice. and then you can learn how to exactly handle that Definitely. experience. Definitely. And I just think that when the youth is now the voice, yeah. it's like that's where they haven't experienced certain things. They haven't seen... They haven't, they haven't seen shit. Right. They're soft. Right. Majority speaking, speak. They're, they're Absolutely. Soft. Or, or, they, or they're too hard. Or right. it's like, you got to learn. Like, look, if you do something ugly, that's right. going to hurt us. That's right. going to hurt your movement. That's going to hurt your family. What was your first job? My first job was Wendy's. Wendy's. I worked at Wendy's. Nice. And, Drive through. Uh, What's up? Drive through? Dry, uh, no, no, no. It wasn't good enough to work the drive through, oh, dude. Okay. I, you had to work your way I was the terrible, dude. I was the worst Wendy's employee, nice. and it was just, it's just, you know what though? It's because I didn't want to do it, and then I did all these other jobs, and I'm like, just like, just like what your wife was saying, it's like, yeah. I, this isn't what I'm supposed to do, and right. I, and luckily for me, uh, comedy came along. I got tricked into comedy, yeah, because you know I was working. I think I was working at Home Depot at the time, and uh, my buddy, my best friend in the world, he tricks me. He goes. Uh, Look, man, I, I hate, he was in a frat, and I should have known because yeah. he hated the frat. And the only <laughs> reason why he joined the frat was because he had a friend that was like, dude, I need someone to rush with me, please. And he's yeah. like, oh, my God. So he joins this dumb frat. Yeah. He lies flat up, straight up and says, hey, they're throwing a giant party. I'm in charge of the comedy entertainment portion. I need, you're the funniest guy I know. Could you do some stand-up? And I go, I've never done stand-up. He's like, you got to help me, bro. Please, you got to help me. We end up going to this stank ass bar called La Bombardier. It's no longer there anymore. <laughs> and uh, 
I, I'm like, where are all your friends? He's like, nah, there was no friends. I just had to get you up there. And I'm like, what? And, I'm, and at first I was kind of mad, but I already signed up. And I'm like, uh, I, I, he goes, he goes, well, we're already here. You might as well sign up. He said you were going to do crowd? it. Huh? Decent crowd out there? No, there's nobody, dude. What? Then the guy, Davio, who was hosting <laughs> it, he made me wait like four or five hours. dude, Because he was letting what? everybody that came up do about half hour. Like, like they all do. They, so who's in the audience? Just me and my three friends. Oh, that was it. There's you might have been one or two other people, but that they was weren't the first giving time a shit. That was my first time on stage. Wow. That was the first time I did it. Uh, I wasn't, and I was terrible, but I wasn't the worst one there that night. And I'm like, <laughs> let me just come you back the some next more. week. Yeah, you got a little taste. Mm-hmm. I think I want some more. Of that yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and then I went back the next week, and and everything, and it's just and and that's the thing. I don't think uh, I think stand up has given me. I think everybody should be a stand-up comedian. Mm. I think I think everybody, or, or I think everybody should at least try to do something, mm. because going out there and doing your blogs and all that, ha, it, try saying that to someone's face when you're looking at them wince and, and yeah. oh, let me let, let me explain, yeah. let me explain, or, <laughs> yeah. or you know, or you let them wince like I'm gonna come. Don't worry, wince all you want. You're, you're just falling right into my joke, right. and then bang, you right. hit them with that misdirection. It's, right. it's, uh, it's it. it it just te- it just taught me a lot. It, it, it gave me a lot of. There's a, so many people I probably would have never met. So many people walks of life I probably right. would have never came in contact with just because I would have been doing a nine to five. Right. And you know, and when you do a nine to five, the four or five people that are in your life are that's it. That's it. That's it. And it's like, you know, so I might not have been exposed to, you know, uh, my Indian buddy DJ Sandu, or I might yeah. not have been exposed to Big Irish Jay or Chris yeah. Shaw or yeah. these guys that have been on this show. You know, I mean, I, I I might not have done that. You bro, know? twenty years, bro. You've been in the game. About that, yeah, about yeah, that. probably, yeah, so actually, gotta, yeah. I've got to ask. Uh, you've met a lot of people. You traveled a lot. Like, is there any like one experience that was like, man, this is probably the coolest shit that's happened, or the best, the highest accolade, or my this 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 particular experience? My favorite moment. Now, you, you got to understand, like I. Uh, when I got the real opportunity to tour, and this is, it's, it's hard for me to say I'm a, like a real stand-up comic right. because I, uh, I, don't, I don't like touring. I hate touring. I yeah. hate touring. I hate touring. <laughs> yeah. And I learned that early on. Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, and I actually learned it by doing some really great clubs, like some Funny Bones and stuff, and yeah, like yeah. some really pristine environments. And, yeah. uh, and I had a great time, but it's all that time alone, man. Yeah. But the best time I ever had, it was... Uh, so Larry the Cable Guy is his wife is the one who nicknamed me Gooch. She gave me the oh, Gooch shit. nickname, right? She taught me radio. She was in radio. She brought me along when I was nineteen. Gotcha. She's like, "Come on, come on in." She ended up becoming my best friend, and, and wow. she and uh, and then that's how I got that it's name. Not a bad contact to have. No, no, yeah. and that's the thing. And she <laughs> and she didn't know him, so it's uh, like so I I was friends with her for years before he came aboard. Gotcha. And uh, you know so. I was friends with the family through that. And um, one day out of nowhere, he just gives me a call. He's like, Gooch, hey, I need an opener for me in South Bend. You want to do it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then he's like, yeah, all right, yeah. meet, me, meet me in St. Louis. So I fly to St. Louis. I, they, he puts me up in this beautiful hotel. Uh, I, I witnessed his show in St. Louis where it was, it was Bill Engvall and uh, Jeff wow. Foxworthy and wow, him. Wow, the whole crew. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, Ron White wasn't there. Okay. But uh, but uh, but I was friends with his opener, PJ Walsh. Uh, he was also there too, and um, and uh, and, and Reno Collier. And uh, but I uh, and that was just that was a cool experience. So I see the tippy tippy right. tippy tippy top. Right? right. I just did a I just did a shit bar gig the day before. <laughs> right. I'm watching the greatest thing that could possibly happen right. and stand up to me. A to Z. Literally. Yeah, it's A to Z. <laughs> and now and then we end up we end up going to uh, we walk around St. Louis, and this is one of the things that made me realize how scary fame is. Yeah. So we're walking, me, uh, Dan, Larry the Cable Guy, Dan, yeah. and uh, we're walking down, uh, and you know the arch, the St. Louis Arch. Uh-huh. Uh, he sees the arch, and uh, and all these people, they just start flocking. Wow. And there's this, next thing you know, I mean, like, I see a couple people, and there's some people running up with their phones, and they're wow. trying to get him, and I'm like, okay. Then I, then I kind of stop, and now I realize that there's like 75 people people following us and there's more coming and i'm like oh god this is freaking me how's your anxiety at this point? that's what i'm saying right (laughs) well it just kind of taught me like he can't ever have fun he can't ever do anything stupid yup you know i mean just imagine man like i ain't famous if i go out there and fuck up or something like somebody's gonna have to go oh gooch fucked up let's talk about him on a podcast but it's not gonna be on inside edition you know what i mean right him on the other hand if he does something explodes on a customer and it gets caught on camera it's like dude it's a wrap you know so that kind of that got in my head right away and 
and that might have killed it. I mean, it's like there's probably some people out there going, oh, he's a bitch. He backed off his dream or whatever. But it's like, God, I just saw that. No, and I'm like, oh, I can no. just see myself snap. But I think that's key, though, is understanding your place or where you're the most comfortable in this industry. Right. Because knowing that you're not a tour, don't go put yourself through that misery if that because you don't have to. Right. There are so many lanes and opportunities and platforms and you know ways to excel in this business now more than ever. So kudos to you yeah. for, for knowing that and kind of understanding that Absolutely. where you are. Uh, please, you know, before we wrap up, let. Oh, okay, wait, 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 I was gonna let me, let me get to the last story. So, okay. so, so after that, after that, we end up going to South Bend. Uh, it was the first time I have, and it's funny because before that, I was smoking like all day, every <laughs> yeah. day, right? Yeah. Smoking pot all day, every day. Yeah. And that time, I'm like, well, I don't want to bring any on the plane, so I didn't smoke. And then I, you know, this is the first time I performed in forever, and I'll never forget it. I'm on, so we go to South Bend. We're in this beautiful hall, and. Uh, it's where Notre Dame's at, by the way. Oh, cool. So it was. Uh, so we end up we end up going to this beautiful hall, and uh, and I'm on the other side of the curtain. And I'll never forget it. I put my hand out there, and I could just feel it. I could feel it. I just mm. couldn't. I, I I'll never be able to capture that feeling again. I don't know if I ever will, wow. but it was like I just felt it. And then I went out there. Dist- it had a, an excellent set. Like I just couldn't believe how good the set was. Right. And then, you know, he went out there and uh, pissed all over my set. But it was like, <laughs> yeah. but, right. but, but and then you after, know it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, went out there and saw some people. And then afterwards, there, I was at the hotel bar and some, I was just getting drinks bought for me all night. Just, yeah. It was just, it was just wow. one of those experiences that made me, that made me, uh, I, I, it was just something I feel I'll, like you made it. I'll Hell always yeah. be thankful for yeah. it. Always. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and, and now you're, you're doing what you love. You're comfortable. You seem really at peace with, with where you are, man. So I love, I love, there's no now. And this is just something I hope young comics realize. Now I'm not looking at people that are doing better than me and going mm. and, and looking at everything that they have that I don't and go, right. well, that's this. And they don't, I didn't get this because right. of this and I didn't get this. I didn't get it because I didn't do it. Right. I didn't get it because I didn't do it. Right, right. You know, and the second you, and when I started having that attitude, which was years ago, it's like five, six years ago, all of a sudden, I'm featuring, I'm getting calls back from clubs, I'm headlining, and it's yeah. like there's, there's things that are happening right. because I stopped trying. Right. Moral of the story, kids. Yeah. Stop trying so fucking hard. I had to end with that. <laughs> so more doing. Exactly. Yeah, don't try so hard, but <laughs> do what comes to you naturally. I think the, the, like the story you said earlier in the day was, was kind of a little bit about that too. Not trying. What, what was it? It's don't, don't try. Yeah, somebody had done a tombstone. Like, Charles yeah, Bukowski. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. try. Just, Super dope. Just do. Don't try. That's what's up, man. Super fly, man. Well, please, man, let the folks know where we can find you, where we can support you. And what else do you want? To, what, is, what other endeavors would you like to accomplish? Uh, you know what, man? I mean, because you're in a good space now. You've that's done the a thing. Lot of things. I don't. This is basically <laughs> right now. It's like I've already accomplished everything I've ever wanted nice. to do. I've headlined my home club. I got in front of a huge. You single? Uh, no, Mary, right here. Mary, Mary. Okay, yeah. sorry, ladies. Yeah, sorry. yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All the happy structure. men that are content and is in a good space, oh, we're already just scooped up. Can't sit on this face. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, shout out to your lovely wife. And how long? Uh, how long has it been? Uh, we, we got married in 2014. Nice. So uh, nice. yeah, so it, it's just like she, uh, you know, and she's she's uh, super in my corner. And what's and, her name? Oh, Lisa. 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 Up, baby, Lisa, boo. baby, boo. And uh, you know, and she, uh, <laughs> and, and the thing is with her, um, she understands that I have to do this. Yeah. She understands that I have to do this. I, I just got to do it. That's dope. And it's, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky. That's what it takes in this business, bro. It's having somebody who really gets it because we live crazy lifestyles. The hours are odd. We got to sometimes talk about and be involved in things that they may not always agree with. So it's, if you can find somebody, and this is what I want to see the world do. Right. Give someone the benefit of the doubt. Mm. When you're married, there's going to be moments where it's somebody from the opposite sex or same sex. I don't know right. how you party, but it's like somebody's mm. going to come along, shoot, shoot a text message. It might throw some shit off. Right. That other person goes, oh, well, they're surrounded by people all day. This is obviously, you know, there's going to be other things that are going to come aboard. Now, I can understand if you've overlooked X, Y, Z, you know I mean? Let me smell your dick. And wait, what's, right. you know I mean? Like, right, I get right. that, you know? Much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, if you're going to overlook that, don't be t- completely blind. But right. it really is. It really is. If you want to, if you want to make the world a better place, you want to yeah. do it right now, yeah. give someone the benefit of the doubt. It's tough. It's not easy. Right. People but that's how you up. make we're it. Human. Yeah, we're that's human. That's it. It is, dude. We're that's human. what it is. So you don't ladies, know how they came down. up. Don't be so strict on us. We're just human. Please. Please. Just give us, give us, you know. 
How close? Well, understand. There no, it is. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we got Gucci in the building today, man. Please, your Instagram one last uh, time so people know where to follow you. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at your buddy Gooch. It's exactly it how it's spelled. G-O-O-C-H. There it is. He's your buddy. He's my buddy. He's a friend of Laugh After Dark. You've tuned into another phenomenal episode. I had a great time with Mr. Gooch. You've been tuning in to Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. I've been your boy, Charlie Wilson. I'll see y'all next time. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Charlie Wilson, man. I just want to take a minute to say thank you. <laughs> I just want to say thank you for um, for supporting and liking and sharing the, the videos to our podcast, Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. Make sure you subscribe and stay connected. I'll see y'all soon. <laughs>